Welcome to my channel. My name is Brian and you're watching The Builder Place. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a back gauge for a press brake similar to this. I've seen many of these uh, press brakes that go on shop presses. Uh, they're homemade like mine. I've seen where you can buy a kit and weld it yourself to make your own or they have off the shelf. I just recently saw a video. Harbor Freight has, I think it's a 12 inch model of this that goes on their uh, shop press. So the issue with these is getting accurate bends for your length of a bend. Um, I haven't seen really anyone that has any kind of back gauge that I think would be either easy to make or that would be accurate. So I sat down and spent a little time and did some research and I think I come up with the right answer and it's not that expensive. I went to uh, one of my big box stores and I ordered a router guide. Now this is normally used on a router and it works great to make nice straight lines. But I'm going to try to adapt that this router guide to make a back gauge for here. Now that's going to be a little bit of a challenge I think. But what I did was I created these blocks at a three quarter inch stock with holes that match to these rods and then I have a hole for the set screw and I'm going to weld this block to the back side of my bender on the base to basically make an adapter so this will work with it. Now I have the drawing, it's, uh, I'm going to include that, a link to that on my, um, oh man, Dropbox. Dropbox account. So this will be a PDF file that you can download for free. Uh, it's to use and uh, it'll be there and I'll give the, like I say, I'll give the link uh, in the description of this video so you can go to it and I'll give the link also to where I bought this gauge um, for, let's see, I think it was under $40 for the part and the shipping. Well, there was no shipping, it was free shipping and the tax. So for under $40, you get this and buy some three quarter inch square stock. I think it may have been say $12 with shipping and all and do some machining, which is easy to do because I just use a drill press to drill the hole and I haven't tapped this hole, which is going to need a, for this one, it's going to be a 5 16 18 thread and that's pretty simple. So most people's shops have a way to cut this piece of metal, to drill that hole. And if you don't have a tap, just buy one tap from your hardware store. So let's go to work and get this thing onto the back of this press brake. And we'll see how well this bends because I plan to do some bending and see how accurate I can get my bends. Uh, I worked in a shop that we had a large press brake and I had that thing dialed into the, uh, I can't remember, I think I was bending in the 15 thousandths um, realm of accuracy. So I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near 15 thousandths accuracy, but the nice thing is you can make repetitive bends with this. Once you have it set, even if it takes a little bit of time, you can just knock out bend after bend and they're all going to be exactly the same. So again, let's go to work. these two spots in the back but this is the center of the bender and then I marked two inches each way and I just put a mark there and I'm just going to put this one block in I'm going to make sure this is square and then I'm going to clamp it down I'm going to adjust this get this right before I start get the C-clamp or the welder clamp about in the right place and I'm just going to hold this I don't know how well you can be able to see it but 
I want to get this square. It's not well, it's not square yet, but I'm not going to be able to square it. Maybe not so much as it, but I want to move this around just a little bit. Let me do that. Problem is, is everywhere I go, I'm in the way of the camera. Let's see if I can do it this way. Probably still in the way of the view of the camera, but I'm going to get that this one square, and I'm going to tack weld this in, and then I'll go and assemble the the gauge to align the second hole. So I know that they're perfectly straight with the with the gauge. So. This one looks like it's in a good position, so I'm going to tack weld it. Put two tack welds in it for now, and then later on, once I make sure everything works good, then I'll, I'll weld it down permanently. <laughs> to install this block, I decided to put the router guide all together and then that would give me the exact center between the two blocks. So I'm going to tack weld that in. I'm going to, first I'm going to clamp it just to make sure that it stays, stays in where it's supposed to be. Put a clamp on it. Before I weld this, I'm going to put a piece of trim metal over top of these rods just to protect them from getting weld splatter. I don't think it's going to splatter that much, but just in case, I don't think it's going to go back in here, but I just want to make sure I don't get any splatter on the, the rod. Okay, so I got this on here and before I did this I kind of was doing some tests and I did notice that if you watch this thing when you're moving in and out it's kind of teetering back and forth a little bit it seems to do it I think it does it well no I was gonna say it seems like it does it more when you're going back than going forward so what I think I'm going to do is I had already bought some heavier springs for here. I just wanted to leave these on here. These are the ones that came with it. I bought a heavier compression spring for here. And there's also, I had seen where there was extra places to put rods. So I was going to put two more rods here. That would help maybe align this a little better and keep it aligned. I could not find springs that were a small diameter of the rod. But I'm going to put a larger spring here. I'm going to put two new rods here and set screw them in. So I'm gonna turn this over and, and but overall it, it does seem to track fairly well. But I think if I put the springs in there, I mean, I think it'll work just like it is. You know, if you wanna, if you wanna do this project and uh, make it work, I mean, it's, it seems like it's repeating itself pretty good, but I want it better, so. I'm going to put different springs and everything that I put on here, I'll try to put a link to the part number, whatever, the size. So you'll have it in case you want to do that. But otherwise, I think right here, if you're happy with this back gauge, just stop the video and go on and make it if you think this is cool. But otherwise, stay with me. I'm going to go through and take that all apart and maybe make it better. If it don't make it better, you won't be seeing this because I won't even I cut it out of the recording. Okay, the first thing I decide I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the springs. So that's kind of a challenge all on its own. Pick this up a little bit. Take the rod out, take the old spring out. And this is, you can see, is a heavier spring. So put that spring in there, see if that helps, hurts. So get that one in, and then we'll take this spring out. It's pretty simple. You can see that it's pushing pretty hard. I'm not sure if you can see at that angle, but from my top-down angle, I can see that that's definitely pushing harder. So let's start this rod in. And they appear to be both pushing about the same. This gap looks about the same on both. So we'll 
say that's good for now. And then I cut some quarter inch rod, just the approximately four inches long. What I wanted to do was get a spring to put in between here also. And I found a spring in McMaster car and I need to do a McMaster car purchase. Uh, so I'm not sure I'm gonna do that next week. So I'm not sure if it's gonna make, that spring's gonna make it in this video, but I'll if I put a spring and get a part number, I'll put that in the description. But otherwise, I'm just gonna put this rod in, this quarter inch rod, and that should help maybe help cause that to rod. And I just have a, uh, six millimeter by one and wow I can't remember the length can't remember if it was 10 millimeters and I'm not a good metric person so I'll have to put that size of this set screw also in the description if I know it's a six millimeter by one and it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be real long so uh, something I mean I'm like I said I'm not good at metric but something makes me think it was a 10 millimeters long but We'll just say that goes in the description. So I like to put things in the description. So if you want to do the same thing, uh, tell where I bought it and part number, put a link there. So I'm hoping that this gives me some more stability so that this stays parallel better, which it was doing an okay job, I think, and you could have just went with what it was, but okay, let's tighten this down, leave these loose. I'm not seeing that same. I'm gonna hold it like this angle here for that camera. I'm not seeing the same um, jumpiness that I was getting side to side. So. Maybe if I put some heavy springs in here, that would make it even better, but I'm satisfied with what I'm getting right now. So let's put this back on the uh, bender and we'll try to make some test bends. Seems to be going in there fairly uh, straight on. So we'll put it in the, in the press to see where we can make some nice bends. This thing's set in here. One thing I want to show you uh, is that you can't set this flat on a table, at least in my configuration, because the, the locking um, screws or the thumb screws would hit the desk. I have a piece of 5052 aluminum alloy, and it's an eighth inch thick. So I want to make a half inch bend measured for, to the outside. So for this bender, or this upper die, it's a radius die. <clears throat> the die is a quarter inch radius. So I need to set the back, the back gauge one and three eighths inch from the center of this die to the back gauge. So this is gonna, this die is gonna hit the center of this at an inch and three eighths. So now I need my. So I got that that back gauge all set. Let me make sure this is tight. And we're gonna go down and we'll see. This is a piece of scrap. Maybe I should. This is the side I cut. I'm gonna go this direction since this is this is the edge I already I cut off. So we'll go this direction. That shouldn't affect anything. So I make sure we're all the way back against the back gauge in the back. <clears throat> And we'll start making our bend. And if everything's right, the back edge is good. That leg should measure inch and a half to the outside. And what I normally do is I may get a piece of scrap metal if I'm going to make a bend, and I'll, I'll find out what those distances need to be. You can set it to one inch and or you set it to whatever and then make the bend and then find out what you need to add or subtract. So we have a bend. I need to find my 
Okay, I have, let me set my square to an inch and a half, best that I can see. That's an inch and a half, I'm gonna measure up from this bottom edge. So you can see I overbent a little bit, that's not a big concern, but when you rock this square, you can see that I'm at an inch and a half pretty much exact all the way across. Now, if it was a square, it would be a lot better. You'd know for sure that you're right because you're falling back into that radius going this direction. But it looks real close. And then if you need to make minor adjustments, if, say, you're off a little bit, you just determine how far that is off. And if it's, say, it's too long by an eighth of an inch, you just bring that gauge in an eighth of an inch, and then you'll get a, an exact bend. So... I'm happy with this so far. I think it's going to work good because I have a lot of brackets I need to make. Prior to selecting this Bosch uh, router guide, I also was looking at Makita had something very similar and DeWalt had something very similar to this, but based on price and what I thought from looking at the pictures, I thought this was a better uh, option. If you were to purchase the DeWalt or the Makita and it does a better job, you know, leave comments and let me know, you know, what you think about the other uh, router gauge used as a back gauge for your press. But uh, this seems to be a really nice uh, thing, especially when I added the springs. That really added a lot. And I still want to add the other two springs here just to give it extra, uh, a lot of extra push. I mean, once you get it locked, once you get it to where you want, you can lock these, and that keeps it from going anywhere. But when you're moving that, this um, micro gauge or whatever, that just that just gives you that extra, just uh, so much extra uh, tweaking on the back gauge. I hope you liked watching this video. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up. Leave comments or questions. I'll try to reply to all the comments that I get if I can. If you like this video, consider watching some of my other videos and then give thought to subscribing to it.